Hey Electronauts, Rhythm Droid here to share with you an advanced programming and performance technique. I like to call it trig layering. Uh, others have called it dual track triggering, uh, spaghetti trigs, um, the Brad and Lisa technique. Um, some even call it the Gothenburg escape contingency. So listen up. By the end of this short video, you'll be a big step closer to becoming that certified Digitone power user, and you can finally win the favor and affections of that fair synth maiden, or synth prince. So, what's going on here on the Digitone? Track three, I have a patch loaded up, which is sort of just a pad. It's kind of an underlayment underneath what we're going to do today. On track one, let's see what we've got. I see some trigs, but I'm not hearing any sound. That's because track one is muted. All right, so I've got sort of this funky sequence being played by kind of a plucky patch. Pretty cool. I'm gonna go to our voice allocation page, which is these lips right here. There's a cool parameter in the corner called layer. It's controlled by knob H. By turning knob H just a little bit, the very first setting is already quite dramatic. The sequence data from track one is actually triggering the sound of track one and the sound of track two. So if I exit out of here, I see that track one is called plucky. That's the name of the sound. Track two is called pow. That's that bass sound you're hearing. Cool. Now I'm going to go back to track one and I'm gonna turn the volume down. Hey, now that means that the sound of track two is actually being triggered by the sequence data here on track one, leaving track two with an extra sequence area that's blank. What happens if I add trigs there? Whoa, it stacks the voice. It's kind of overpowering. But with this blank sequence area, I can do something very cool. I can add a trigless parameter lock. Hold down function and tap this. Now, I can add a parameter lock without actually triggering a note. So I'm gonna kinda tweak the synth page a little bit. We can hear a change there. Cool, right? So the notes are on track one, but the parameter lock is taking place on track two. So I can start laying this out. Interesting, right? These are just empty parameter locks, but the notes are on track one. Are you with me? I'm gonna clear that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Add a trigless lock. Make sure we can really hear the change in the sound. But I'm gonna go to the trig page and I'm gonna give it some conditional programming. I'm gonna say only trigger 33% of the time. Now I'm gonna copy this same trig across the whole 16 steps. By the way, you can also copy multiple trigs at once by holding down several, paste, paste, pretty cool, right? So now, this particular parameter lock is happening just sort of at random times, but the note data is still intact right here on track one. Cool, right? Now I'm gonna do something even crazier. I'm gonna clear that. Go ahead and add a uh, triggerless lock. Give it our classic sort of tweaking that we've been doing. But this time, the conditionality is going to be the very first option, which is called fill mode. Now I'm gonna copy this out. Now the only time we're gonna hear this parameter lock take place is when we activate fill mode. The implications of this are pretty powerful. Uh, if you like videos about hardware live electronic music performance, subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. See you later.